Hello, welcome to the channel. Today, we challenge our classically trained chef, Ben, to master a technique he's never tried before, with the help of an expert. The thing is, if you're anything like us, you're probably quite impatient. So we're only gonna give him an hour to learn everything he can before he returns to the studio to demonstrate his new skills to us. He's learning from the expert. He's not here. Why would you cut to that camera? Always up for learning new stuff. But this isn't the safety of the sorted kitchen. So Prakash does our dosas at the restaurant. We've obviously got a number of chefs, but he's coming a bit earlier than the others today. Back home, we'd have really thick iron dosa tapas. And it's all about that heat retention. It's a yeah. bit like cooking in a cast iron casserole, you know? So it's all about that heat retention. We've tried to find something that's, you know, replicates it. It kind of works. Sometimes I feel the ones back home are much better. So then you're waiting for the color to just shine through. Now, you've eaten many of these, haven't you? Yes. Um, I've never made one, though. <laughs> you're gonna, hopefully, you'll be making one by the end of the day. So let's start with the ultimate basic, right? That's the batter in there. It's a rice and lentil batter with a little bit of fenugreek in there. We make it overnight, and then you sort of allow it to ferment. You, ferment. Can, see you can see the bubbles. Yeah. When would a dose be eaten? What time of day are we talking? Traditionally breakfast. Now, obviously, it's become a lot more popular and you get it all times of day and night. This is obviously plain. It's a version we do with chili and cheese. Uh, it's one of my favorite flatbreads. So Prakash, come on. Show take those stuff in the next 10 minutes, quickly. A little bit of oil, water. That's so clean, but it also tells you whether it's at the right temperature. So you're because you hear to that, that sound. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like almost like a cup measure without a handle, but a very flat bottom. Exactly. So it's a measure. Yeah. It's also the perfect oh, instrument see. to spread your dose out. And there was no oil on it, but this is where the oil, butter, ghee, sesame oil, we use, uh, yeah. we use that for some of our traditional dosa. So it's an untoasted sesame oil. Yeah. But if you put the oil on, it wouldn't have stuck. And if it wouldn't have stuck, you wouldn't get that beautiful golden color. So you kind of want it to stick to the pan, which wouldn't happen if there was oil. So what are we looking for? Crispy. So golden, evenly golden. Crispy, um, and you know something that holds its shape. The flavour is really important, so that's something you can't see, but yep. you got to taste. A little bit of that hint of that bitterness, you from the fenugreek, you get that beautiful sort of lentil savouriness. Mm -hmm. You get rice to give you that nice carb, bringing it all together. If you went to India, you would never eat dosa without chutneys and sambar. Yeah, go ahead and try one of these. That's my favourite. Let's see what you think. So have a taste. Then, but remember, as soon as that goes in your mouth, you've got one hour to ask us as many questions as you want, and then you're going to make and you're going to be practice, making right? this for me and the rest of the team back in the studio. So first thing I test in the kitchens, I walk in, I try the chutneys, mm -hmm. the sambals. If these are not right, these are not fresh, then you know that there's something wrong. Generally, so good. It's the cross between the the texture and the ferment. Mm -hmm. So thin, you can literally see the bubbles through it because of the fermented and mixture. It's a perfect. It's a perfect little spoon to spoon up anything you want. You get a get curries in, you get those chutneys in. Mm. Right, so. Just a little bit on it. A little bit of oil. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. You made it look so easy. Oil. There's definitely lumpy bits, we need to oil from no the top. Yeah, oil from the top when you see it browning. Yeah. Definitely browning in places first. You can it up a little bit, yeah. They're being very polite and saying it's not terrible, but I think it fairly is. There's definitely a knack, and if you could, if you could literally see inside my brain and all the cogs turning to make sure I was taking on all the advice. I think if you've got the batter right, and the 
grill is at the right temperature, and then you've got a level, steady hand, it's okay. But there's three things there that can go very wrong. Getting there, but still a little bit saggy. I'm gonna go with saggy as opposed to crispy. Now, and this is the irony, doing this at home is gonna be even harder. So we're gonna go back to the studio, and I want you to do, it. even if you get this right in the studio, you've got 10 on 10. Karen, it's so good to have you back, thank you. Ebers, can you do it? Uh, look, it's really easy in the restaurant when you've got professionals who've done all the mise en place. We're going to try and do it here and see how we get on. Get your doses out in three, two, one, doser. So look, it is a fermented rice and lentil batter. He's got that right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm good at maths. It was 75% ratio rice to lentil with also some fenugreek. So all have been soaked and basically into a blender, blend it up and then leave it to ferment. I've it, never it, seen no, him more no. nervous. This is amazing. The technique takes some getting used to, even in the restaurant. I'm scared about these pans, they're different. I would I would I would drain that completely. Oh, so you know, Karen, Karen, Hang on. This is this is where this is, this is this is this is where you're going wrong. Yeah, let him make the mistake. Fine. And then Fine. correct him because it's better for all of us. No idea how much of this because the batter's already made for me and I didn't ask. Let's go easy on that. Yeah, a little bit. Stop it! <laughs> so you're looking for something, the consistency of like yogurt, but a bit more stretchy. But that will come after fermenting. If your blending is at home and always go thicker and then water down because once you water down there's nothing you can do. So at this point, it needs to ferment room temperature overnight. Yep. Do you season it now or in the morning? Ever, 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 it's time for this. Come here. For this. You had your chance to learn. What are you going to do? Season it afterwards. Might affect the ferment. Season it now. Oh, hey! <laughs> <laughs> but look, everyone does it differently. Everyone does it a little bit. Oh yeah, differently. I do it this way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, so that's that's pretty much there. Or, alternatively, we found out you can just buy a wet mix. What do you, I don't know, I have no idea. Do you rate these kind these of pre-made mixes? These are, so you get dry mixes, which you just mix in water. You get these ones, which are even better. Sometimes if you're in sort of, you know, uh, areas of London where there's a big community, you'll have restaurants that actually make them and sell them in bags. Oh, wow. A bit like we've done with him right now. We just sent him with a box of our restaurant batter. So important to reference that you're already cheating here by using Curran's batter rather than your own one. We could wait till tomorrow morning, or we could use Curran's batter and do it now. Mm. Mm. Do it, okay, fine, mm. do it now. So you can see it's kind of thick, aerated because of the ferment bubbles, but it's just got a consistency that's almost stretchy. So we've got a cast iron pan and we've got a regular crepe pan. Both have been preheated. Should we try the crepe pan first? Because I feel like that's the one that everyone will have. Although I feel like this will be the better one. Make it as accessible as possible. Do both together, man. Two hands. Two hands, two cups. <laughs> Come on. Whose side are you on, Karen? This is the little dishy thing, both to lay, ladle, portion and spread. But again, it's quite specialist. If you haven't got one, probably a Dariol mould. It's got to have a flat bottom, possibly a measuring cup. Again, you need a flat bottom. So, going for bog standard, I'll use that. Now oh, this, is, this is the bit I get really nervous about. <laughs> so a little bit of oil and a splash of water. Oh, now they don't mix. To see where we're at and then just wipe it down. It needs to be dry, but that just takes the temperature down before you add the batter in. So using the bottom of the pan, or oh, I'm going to say not hot enough. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have used that <laughs> because I would have, I think that's a little too big. You oh, want okay. full control. You want something light. That Dario mold was probably have been better. Even some of the best professionals would struggle on a pan, on a non-stick pan particularly. That's right. why my go-to is always that cast iron. Definitely not hot enough. Definitely gone with a tip of thicker to start off with to be safer, but this is going to be far too thick on the first one. Second one, we're going to thin it down. Yeah. In fairness, your first pancake's always duff, in it? hundred percent. So. But listen, Ben, I mean, there are different techniques of those. This is the one with the fluffy middle. No, you get, you get, you, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. Thank you. I had to see it, there's stuff in the way, I can't see it. <laughs> you don't want to see it, Karen, it's not my best effort. <laughs> That's not too bad, Ben. That's not too bad at all. Let's, let's have a look at that. Yeah. Bring it over. Yeah. But that colour's great. Second time, I'm going cast iron, I'm maybe a slightly good. smaller mould like the Dario. Really good. See what happens. Ooh. Mm. Wow. Good batter. It is the batter that makes that. It really is. Ooh. 
Oh, oh, oh. Mm. You've got it's to be an ooh. super quick because so, it starts setting. Yeah, it starts to set, and because it's not quite as smooth as a bottom, it's slightly concave. I've got a different, different vibe going on. So home equipment is causing a challenge at the moment. What is it they say, Barry, about bad workmen? What do they blame? Something about their tools. Mm. Not sure. Two of my tools are stood on the side. <laughs> That was a cool band. I think there was too much water down there. The cast iron, it hasn't worked at all. I've given up with the cast iron. So you're going against Curran's recommendation? I'm going against this pan. <sighs> it sounds like that you're going is, against... You know with the stick, Curran? Yeah, that needs a proper scrub to get that off now. Is that your pan you brought from home? Yeah, and I'm yeah. thinking about the hours I'm going to take to re-season it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas this one, I feel like we've got now. But you see, that's one more thing. You see how it's sort of come off itself? Almost. And that's why you'll never get that beautiful browning that you'd get with a cast iron, which the other one is browning. What I really like is, usually it's Ebers standing on the side, giving us all of the judgment and all of the snarky comments. It's really nice to see him get a dose of his own medicine. Oh, oh wow. yeah. <laughs> Seeing if it's the bottom to blame. Oh. Oh. Practice makes perfect. And you might not want to achieve that super crisp dosa. Yeah. Uh, you might just want to go with something thinner, uh, thicker and softer. I don't you can see his commitment. You can see he's going to be making this. He's going to run down that batter. He's mm -hmm. going to be making this all evening now. And you, know, it's good fun. you can see each one is a little better. Yeah. The other thing is, you know, they're savoury. So you can actually stuff them with whatever you want. Yeah. Just go crazy. Boys, three options. And I feel like they were getting progressively more crispy and cone shape and dosa like. But. We've also got two of those kind of side dishes to serve with, but we've left one empty because there's one that we absolutely love at the restaurant. We want to steal the recipe from Curran. It's the easiest one to make, and I'm going to come there and show you how it's done. Coconut chutney. So well done on the, on the dosas, and honestly, I am so scared of cooking on that nonstick pan. That's a great look for a nonstick pan. This one, first one, will always be a little patchy, just like a pancake. That one's a great colour. That one's great. Ebers, I have to say, from our point of view, we gave you an hour to learn it, and I think you did a pretty good job, so... Yeah, well, they taste, no, the no, important no. thing is, they taste great, albeit that's, that's the hopper batter, mm. but it's really good fun. Anyway, chutney, coriander chutney, tomato, one of my favourites, but that coconut is traditional. It doesn't look like much, and it's so easy to make. Grated, fresh coconut, this is not desiccated. You can buy this in frozen packs. Again, the same shops that sell you the dosa batter could sell you these as well. What's That's the cool. first step? First step, get a blender. Slightly bigger than that if you can find one, but we'll make do. <laughs> It'll be... Isn't everything, Karen? <laughs> Look, my pan was smaller, my hob smaller. A little bit of coconut in there. Again, different households have different ways of making these. Um, there'll be a lot of you watching this who've had this growing up. About sort of two parts of that to a part of these. Now try one of these. I know it looks like dried lentils, but it's very deceptive. So it is chana dal, or gram lentils, small ones, that are dried, but then they're toasted. So this is a very important ingredient. We call it daria dal. It gives you that amazing nuttiness. That is delicious on its own. It is really nice. It's like gram, yeah. really nice and nutty. It has a powdery sort of te powdery texture uh, to them, which the coconut will sort of counter. Green chili, I'm gonna go in with one. Um, you can go in with a little more. Um, and then just a little bit of fresh ginger, then a little bit of salt. So we'll add a splash of water in now. Again, you don't want to go too thin. That doesn't feel like any of the ingredients that I would put in a chutney. No, chutney is basically a blend of fresh ingredients, usually not cooked. Let's get a little bowl straight into a serving bowl. That's great. So I like it quite coarse. You can go a little thinner. You don't want it to be a complete base. That's the base of the chutney. You could have it just like that, it's super fresh, really nice and nutty. So tempering is this process of sort of adding flavors on, extracting flavors from spices. Now, when you temper them in oil, you, they release all those amazing aromas into the oil. Um, these are a different kind of the white lentils, urad lentils we call them. Mm -hmm. Lentils are one of those things that I think we always associate as the, the staple, the legume, the base to something, not using it as a 
tempering, mm. as a spice, as a flavour, mm. as a texture in the chutney. Mm -hmm. We never considered to cook with them in any other way other than the lentil. Mm -hmm. And this is the fun thing about South Indian food, like they would go into curry powders. They'd go into spice spice blends. You know, the, the spicy thing we put, the, uh, the chilli powder we put in the dosa in the morning, that's made with lentils as well. Chuck your mustard seeds in. It can get a little hotter, you want them to start popping. You don't want to overdo those lentils because then they go really hard. But at the same time, you don't want to underdo them because they stay hard. Just curry leaves, an optional ingredient, but I love them, so I find every excuse to use them. And then chilies, I'm not going to break these up, but you could break them up if you want it quite hot. It's going to go with the whole chilies. You can already smell that amazing nut curry, leaf. that curry leaves coming yeah. out. And that's it, that's your flavour bomb. Curries, you do it on potatoes. Look at that, love this. That's it, done. Leave it in there, serve it, it looks beautiful. And then just give it a nice stir, mix it all gets through. In with the, with the dosa in. or any other breads. Come on, boys. Let's get some normals in to taste let's this, get in. it's unreal. Let's taste this. Um, so there we go, let's give this a nice stir. I mean, incredible team effort. I'll tell you a floppy oh, one then. then. You're gonna have a floppy one. Use it like a napkin. He's actually using it like a napkin. <laughs> but, but, oh, Jesus. That's fine. Cheers. cheers. Go for it. <laughs> Very traditional, the cheers. Ooh. Oh. You get the crunch, right? It's yeah. really mm. nutty. And that's from the lentils. I wasn't expecting the heat. But most important, you can still taste the dosa as well. They are world-class chutneys. I mean, it's a shame we don't have world-class dosas to dip in them. <laughs> but you know, I think you've done Give a pretty good job. Give me a few job. more years. I think you've done a pretty good job. <laughs> I think he's done a phenomenal job. Especially for home, for home settings, that hob was difficult. Like I said, even tempering mustard in that was difficult. So we really gave him a challenge, and I've now got a challenge of re-seasoning my pan. <laughs> but He's not gonna apart that from that, I'm not no, going to let him You've really done no, one there. Yeah, yeah. Right, you saw the whole process. How do you think Ebbers got on? Comment down below, let us know. And also, thank you, Karen, for coming down. Um, this is out of this world, and I couldn't recommend offers anymore. You've got to go to Karen's restaurant. All the links are downstairs. And also, give him a follow on all the socials. Your stuff is just outrageous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you know you're always welcome. There's always more skills to learn. If I had gas right now, at least I can hear it, and I know exactly what it's doing to the pan. Whereas <laughs> this sort of I mean, hybrid induction hub makes it so much. 